If you want your erection to look more like this and less like this, you might want to pay attention. Based on the rise of popularity in erectile dysfunction drugs for men, it's apparent that a lot of men struggle to get it up. Now, there's many factors that can cause erectile dysfunction. It's important to understand that your erection quality and your erection response are directly tied to the state of your nervous system. In this video, you're gonna learn some information about erections you probably haven't heard before that could really affect your sex life in a very positive way. I'm Jonathan White. I'm here to help you achieve sexual and self-mastery and channel your sexual energy so you can live an epic life. If you enjoy the content, make sure you subscribe to support the channel and get your free ejaculation control course through the link in the video description below. For a man, the penis is a microcosm of the body. And if something's off in the body, it's reflected in the penis. So whenever sexual dysfunction arises, it's a sign that something's out of balance. Something in your mind and your body is out of balance. And this video is gonna go a bit above and beyond just the general erection health advice you'll hear. If you drink alcohol every day, if you eat refined sugar, refined carbs every day, if you don't exercise and are you know generally unhealthy, then this isn't exactly the video for you. I recommend starting with my sexual vitality optimization guide video. But of course, everything will still equally apply here. If you're a man who's reasonably healthy, if you feel like you're doing a lot of things right, but you're still having erection issues, this is for you. So when it comes to the processes of the body, of course, sexual arousal, erection, orgasm as well. The state of the nervous system and having a regulated nervous system is very important. What's happening to most people in the world right now is that they are stuck in a state of stress. Fight or flight, sympathetic nervous system dominance. If you're not familiar with this concept, we have the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. The parasympathetic is our grounded, rest and digest, at ease state. When we feel good, when we feel calm, you're walking through the park, not under anxiety, just feeling calm and present, you're parasympathetic. When you're stressed out, overthinking, worrying, anxiety, fears, mental tension, anger, physical tension, you are in a fight or flight state. And what's happened is that in quite recent times, and this is just intensifying more and more, people are stuck in the sympathetic nervous system. And this is not how our bodies were meant to be functioning. The sympathetic nervous system is meant to be a survival response. It's like, okay, there's a tiger running at you. Like, yeah, you need to pump some adrenaline, some cortisol through your blood. So you have a little burst of energy to escape or to, to fight that tiger, to tear its head off, and then, okay, threat's gone, ah, oh, let's go back to normal. And this would be a very occasional thing if we lived in, I don't know what a natural world is anymore, but if we lived in a more kind of natural, primal environment, we would probably have much more regulated nervous systems. What's happening in the modern world is that there's constantly a tiger chasing us, metaphorically. Obviously not literally, at least not for most people. Maybe you have tigers out your back door, I don't know. But because of, I think technology is one of the most common things, because the internet, the world's bigger than ever, but it also means that people are constantly connected to stressful information. News, social media, feeling unworthy because of this person's Instagram account. All the information we're processing from electronic devices is it's, it's at an unprecedented level. And it's keeping people stuck in a state of tension sympathetic nervous system. And that is seriously negatively affecting the ability of your body to function properly. Circadian rhythm, sleep is negatively affected, digestion, hormonal levels. And of course, another one of these is your erection quality, your ability to get an erection at a proper time and to hold that erection during sex is negatively affected by this. When it comes to sex, it's very difficult to have a healthy sexual response, to have a balanced natural sexual response when you are stuck in fight or flight mode because just the way our bodies were programmed in a natural environment, being in that fight or flight state means that again, there's a predator coming at you. So your body's not going to want you to be like, oh, there's this tiger running at me, but oh, look at that hot girl over there. Oh yeah, baby. Sex is no longer a priority when your survival is perceived as being under threat, which is it constantly is 24 seven for a lot of people in the modern world, even though it's an illusion. So sexual function shuts down, but there's even more subtle layers to this because it's not always as obvious as, am I afraid I'm gonna die or not in this moment? Another cause of being stuck in these fight or flight states comes down to childhood experiences. Having traumatic experiences, uh, especially having shame and trauma around sexuality, causes you to relive that sexual shame, that sexual trauma, whenever you're in a sexual situation. So even if like throughout the day, you're generally calm and balanced, what happens for some men is as they go into a sexual experience, suddenly they feel anxiety, they feel fear, they get shut down and they can't get an erection or they get in a weak erection or they ejaculate almost immediately after starting to have sex. So there's this old charge, we could say, this, this old stress factor that was never let go of, that's stuck within your nervous system, stuck within your mind and body, and you're reliving that 
every time you go into a, a sexual situation. So that is another very common cause of this, which just comes down to having a lack of self-love, having a lack of feeling safe with your sexuality, feeling proud of your sexuality. I mean, how many people feel like safe and proud and confident in their sexual expression? Some people do, certainly, but if you're like me, growing up, you did not feel this way. I felt a lot of shame, a lot of embarrassment. I didn't feel safe with my sexual expression. It felt like it was something wrong. It was something I had to hide that even the women I was dating didn't fully want to see that. You know what I mean? So just with all these things happening, it's not hard to see like why erection issues and premature ejaculation are so common. So here's the thing, a lot of men are really concerned about their penis size. Like, you know, I get questions from men all the time. How do I make my penis bigger? Will this make my penis bigger? But here's the thing, penis size is not that important. What's actually important is how soft or how hard is your erection. And here's another interesting thing. I'm, I'm waving this thing around. Well, here's an interesting thing. I don't watch porn anymore. It's, it's been almost a decade since I used to, you know, consistently watch porn. But when I did, thinking back on it, I noticed that a lot of men in porn have half erect penises. Even if they have these huge long penises, they're not, they're usually not fully erect. They're usually kind of floppy because, well, these guys probably aren't super healthy a lot of the time. They're, they're usually taking all kinds of erectile dysfunction drugs to try to just unnaturally pump up their erection. They're also like probably ejaculating way more than they should be, just depleting their sexual battery. So my goal personally is to have the hardest erection possible. I believe that if you're a healthy man, your erection should be more like the texture, the consistency, whatever the word is. This, this banana here, maybe a cucumber would be more or, uh, appropriate, but I don't have a cucumber handy. So this is about, you know, even, even actually more firm than this. There's like that there's a strong firmness, but also the angle of your erection is a good uh, indicator of your, your erection potency, so to speak. I believe that all men should aim for having a at least a two o'clock angle to their erection, meaning that if your pelvis, now pelvic tilt will play into this, but if you have a relatively straight pelvis, your erection should be about this angle. And let me tell you, when I'm healthy, when I'm vital, when I'm turned on, it's about a two o'clocker, okay? Now, three o'clock's fine. Three o'clock is, maybe that should be like your bare minimum. But if your erections are down here, definitely if they're down here, you are not operating at your full erection potential that you could have. And some men are even able to get to the 12 o'clock or one o'clock position. And that's a goal of mine, let me tell you. And here's another thing about the two o'clock erection, or at least at least the three o'clock. The harder your erection is, the easier it actually is to control your ejaculation. One of the causes of premature ejaculation is having a half-flaccid penis. When your penis is not completely hard, the frenulum area is much more sensitive. This is the ejaculation control trigger. And when your penis is half flaccid, it's going to trigger ejaculation very quickly. The harder your cock is, the more you will be able to control your ejaculation. So that your erection strength becomes an indication of, of course, your nervous system health and balance, because to have healthy sexual response, you must have your parasympathetic nervous system switched on enough. And basically the more parasympathetically dominant you can be, the better your sexual vitality will be, the better your erections will be, the better your ejaculation control will be as well. And of course, this goes hand in hand with hormonal balance as well, which is also very directly tied to your, your libido and your ability to have a healthy erection response. And now I'm gonna share some different things you can do to help really balance your nervous system, which will carry over into you having better sexual vitality as well. But first, I want to share something that really kind of sums this up for me. There was a time period, uh, this was a few years ago, where I had a lot of stress in my life. I, um, I had some slight hormonal imbalances and my libido was a bit lower than normal. Like I wouldn't say it was low libido, but for me, anything other than high libido is abnormal. So I'm like, what's going on here? But in this time period, I went on a camping trip with my brothers and I was just out in the forest for three days. No cell service, no technology, just hanging out in the woods, totally organic in my body, in the real life world. And I was waking up every morning with just the craziest erections, just rock hard, like I was 18 years old again. And I came home from that trip just like feeling recharged sexually, strong sexual vitality. And since then I've noticed like anytime, again, a couple months ago, I went to Florida just to spend a week, it was my wife and I's anniversary. We were just hanging out on the beach, just really chilling, having a lot of downtime. And my sexual vitality is pretty solid now. But in this trip, I was even hornier, I had even, harder erections, like everything got cranked up to 20. So this, this theme I've noticed is like, I live a very healthy lifestyle. You know, I'm, I'm exercising, right? I feel like my diet's pretty solid. I'm doing all the right things. But what has made the biggest difference for me is when I'm living in a state of just calmness, relaxation. That is what I've found to be the most important thing in regulating your nervous system. So with that, let's let's get into the solutions. How can we, how can we help? How can you help, help 
turn this into this. So like I just mentioned, the number one thing is calmness, mental calmness. It really seems to start in the mind with people. You know what I mean? Because when your mind is in a state of disarray, a state of tension and, and worry and just racing thoughts, that switches your nervous system into fight or flight mode. And that manifests as physical tension. Ugh, you're stressed out. You can eat healthy, you can exercise, you can do all the right things. But if your mind isn't healthy, if you're just finding all these things to worry about, just like consuming all this garbage media, you're never going to be in that state of balance. So that's the first and foremost thing is balance the mind. So important and so overlooked often. And how do you do that? Well, like I just mentioned, you know, just have some downtime, turn off your screen. That's the most important thing for me is regulating time staring at a screen because these devices, you know, yeah, they're, they're beneficial. They connect us and they allow us to do things we couldn't do before but they also overstimulate our nervous system, give us way more information than we can digest and cause a lot of tension and anxiety for us. So have established some healthy boundaries with the technology you use. Practicing meditation is really great. Learning to balance your mind, learn how to breathe properly. Breathwork and meditation can really help to regulate your nervous system. What's important for me is prioritizing going for a walk in nature every day. I live in a beautiful environment, I live in Asheville, North Carolina, where I live in a forest basically, so it's not hard for me to get out and walk in nature. So everyone lives close to at least a park or something. Like get out an hour a day, go walk in nature. Don't listen to podcasts, don't consume information, or even listen to music. Listen to the birds singing. If you're by a river or stream, listen to the water. Listen to the sounds of the environment, of nature. Here's the thing, nature is vitality. Not to sound like a hippie here, but it's true. Nature is vitality, it's life force, it's expansion and growth. It's this modern, urban, you know, concrete, electricity, Wi-Fi signals, not exactly conducive to health and vitality. It's the opposite of vitality, okay? And you can live in the city, but the more you can get out into nature and just unplug and just listen to the sounds of nature, the more it tunes you into that it tunes you into that state of vitality and balance. Spend more time with the trees and your wood will be hard, you know what I'm saying? And then physical balance, because there can be two extremes here. One is not exercising at all, a lethargic, sedentary lifestyle. Yeah, that's going to cause problems. You probably will not have great erections if you do not move your body, move your blood. But the other extreme can be too much movement, too much exercise, overtraining, overexertion. That can be very much as well. I've been in both of these extremes at certain areas of my life. And in both of those times, I had poor sexual vitality. It's about balancing exercise and rest. This is yin and yang. Not too much, not too little. And how much is not enough or too much for you will vary. You have to experiment. But rest is extremely important. And not just physical rest, of course, getting good sleep, allowing your physical body to rest. But once again, that mental rest is so important as well. Sleep is huge. Maximizing your sleep is one of the best things you can do for your sexual vitality. Toxicity. This is a very real thing here. And ultimately, toxicity is a stressor on your body. Toxins from the environment, food, water, air. It's unavoidable. Like, yeah, cleaning up your diet and your, your water supply is very important and you should be doing that. But there's really no avoiding it. And that's why I recommend detoxification for everyone. Check out my sexual vitality detox because that's another thing when I detoxified my body my sexual vitality became much better of course nutritional deficiency can be another cause for a dysregulated nervous system so make sure your diet is on point you're getting all your essential vitamins minerals ideally from a food source like if you're on a diet where you have to supplement everything you're probably not on a very good diet. So you wanna make sure like the food that you eat is giving you the resources your body needs to build itself. And speaking of detoxification, the liver is very important to talk about here because having a healthy liver means that you have healthy hormone levels, healthy testosterone as a man. And, and in Chinese medicine, the liver is very much related to erections, essentially. Liver is the wood element, so you, know, you do the math. And when your liver is taxed with toxins, which most people's livers are, it tends to release higher levels of sex hormone binding globulin, which binds to testosterone, meaning that testosterone is no longer readily available to be used by your system. And you tend to have higher estrogen, weak erections, etc. Qigong is a practice that I highly recommend because it has a very balancing effect on your nervous system. Now, this isn't really the primary point of the practice. The primary point is to cultivate levels of tangible electrical qi in your body, which is an incredible experience but a side effect of doing that is a, a strong like regulation and very calming effect on your nervous system like I became a very different person once I started practicing Qigong I went from being anxiety ridden in my head introverted just you know very locked up with tension and shyness and fear 
to being much more grounded, much more calm, much more centered and just confident and sexually vital as well. So check out my Qigong playlist for some really great practices. It will really support your process in this. And another note of why I really recommend like Qigong meditation, breath work, yoga practices, these can help earlier on I was talking about from our early experiences of childhood and, and our first sexual experiences, sometimes we develop these we develop this trauma and this, this stress and shame around sexuality that re-triggers whenever we go into a sexual situation. These practices that I just mentioned can help to over time release these patterns from your body. And this is a huge focal point of my multi-orgasmic man and sex god courses is releasing the stress charge around sexuality and stepping into a confident, calm, centered, grounded state with very strong erections and complete ejaculation control. The number one thing I recommend is learning to get out of the monkey mind. Get out of worry, of overthinking, all this mental activity. The more you can get out of your head and just be in your body, the more that you will be able to stay in parasympathetic nervous system dominance. The happier you will feel, the better you will feel, and the healthier your erections will be. Oh yeah, baby. All right, I hope that you took something away from this video. If you have any questions or want me to explain any of these concepts further, let me know in the comments below. Always good to hear from you guys. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Wishing you much sexual vitality and happiness in your life, my friend. Take care.